Um, obviously, the author of the award-winning entry, parents, head of strategy, TBWA. Uh, most of us we know we know him well. But an additional remark is, parents not only the author for the entry. He himself has been doing the judge for for APAC FEs for for quite some years. So. Effie, uh, Terence really knows well about the Effie. So why don't I hand over the stage to Terence? And in the meantime, guys, if you have questions, make use of our chat box, okay? You can fill your questions in the chat box. Okay, cool. Terence? Cool. Um, thank you for that. Uh, very kind of you. So I'll just get started with my sharing here. I hope you will be able to see this well. Yes. Cool. All right. So um, I'll be sharing just a few uh, tips on how to craft an uh, FE entry. It's always a bit of a struggle for me to share this because it are it is you know a lot of my uh, private secrets uh, secrets that uh, you know uh, it's going to make my life a little bit harder every single time I share this every single year. But it's great. You know, I'd love to also kind of uh, maybe just share some of my experiences on what seem to be uh, I think very, very important to bear in mind when you're trying to craft an entry. Before I do that, uh, I'll actually share with you um, what is the case that we're, uh, this, this particular entry was writing towards. Um, it's a case called Small Business Drive for Lexus. The all new Lexus UX is built for urban exploration, but in the world's most expensive real estate market, what good is urban exploration if there's little left to explore? We are Pottery uh, Studio and the thing. Uh, this is a small yoga studio. Because we are industrial building, we cannot allow on people walking on the street. In terms of foot traffic from outside, um, not a lot. With small creative businesses forced further and further away from the high street into the least explored parts of the city, we turn the challenge of finding them into a unique test drive experience. We created a data-driven test drive experience connecting drivers who love to explore with small businesses that need to be discovered. Through this digital test drive platform, we harness drivers' social interest, engagement, and location data, generating personalized routes to the hard-to-find lifestyle destinations they had never explored before. By shining a light on the studios, galleries, cafes, and shops people never knew existed, we were able to demonstrate the urban exploration capabilities of the UX crossover. We wanted to market to a younger generation of car owners where they place experience uh, as a top priority. The UX, it's a perfect fit to actually test drive within downtown cities and to explore the small streets and small places of Hong Kong to find special gems within the city. It's definitely opened my eyes to a completely new side of Hong Kong. It made exploring new streets and finding new experiences in the UX really fun and intuitive. Hong Kong is reeling from weeks of anti-government protests. The government warns that the longer these protests go on, the more pressure they will pile on small and medium in time. It's a really hot moment. We need to pay our style. We need to pay the when. We have to cancel a lot of our classes. I would say more than 50%. Everything is not easy. And you don't know how, when it's going to end. With the economy in turmoil, we open the platform to even more small businesses before rolling it out to all models in the Lexus lineup. Even inviting other brands to join us. Having a platform like this, showcasing the hidden gems in Hong Kong is helpful for us. Right, okay. So the first tip actually, uh, before I really jump into it, is make sure your video is abiding to all of the FE rules uh, before it is entered, right? There are very, very strict rules according to the entrance toolkit um, on what your video should or should not be able to do. So ensure you check that out. I have been, uh, in many of these years, uh, I have often sometimes been very, very uh, strictly reminded of some of these rules. So make sure you do not even try to go anywhere close on them. Um, okay, so back to the real tips. Okay, so 
First of all, and you may have probably heard this very often when it comes to writing an effectiveness uh, case, is that you're you're not trying to simply tell an account of what happened. You're needing to very importantly tell a story. Um, you need to tell it in a way that will be ab enabled to invite your judge to really understand the real challenges, help almost empathize you as an as a brand as an entrant in terms of you, where you were at in your marketplace and really therefore want to really feel that they can really they dive into your story and almost fall into it so one very important um, and i think helpful way that the new fe's uh system uh, enables you to kind of think through on the crux of your story is actually the first five lines that you actually need to 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 to, to write out um, so these five elements should actually serve for you as kind of like the free key framework of what your whole story should be underpinned by, right? So, so to have the child, what's the original big challenge you're trying to overcome in the first place? What's that important insight around that target that you've discovered that helps you find your incredible solution? Um, what is that big idea? What is, how did you bring that to life? And what's the what were the headline results that you were able to do from this? Right. So so the, the kind of classic uh, 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 storyline behind what you're trying to uh, paint at the end of the day should actually help you see right through what you're needing to cover throughout this. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all is um, and this is something that I, I've actually I, this is a big advice from also judging a lot of ent uh, entries over the years is that it's really critical you are grounding your case on a business problem and not a comms one only so so i've seen uh, when i've been judging uh, uh, entries in many many times over the past a lot of cases sometimes are alluding to how a, how a brand is merely being seen or how how um, they're, they're maybe a, it's facing other competitors who have bigger budgets and so on. But what matters more is what was understanding the exact business situation and the exact business problems that your your you were facing. Um, and um, and it really helps the judge understand the, the business and the industry dynamics in the first place. Without without that understanding, we do, it is going to be very hard to understand what's that ultimate business impact you're making if you don't know what the business problems you're trying to resolve in, in uh, uh, first and foremost. Um, thirdly, so I think sometimes it could be a bit overlooked in terms of how the targeting itself should also be an interesting part of the story. So. It, it may be that you were genuinely trying to target, for example, uh, uh, millennials in Hong Kong, right? But could you be a bit more precise into it? What, how did you go about it? In, uh, how did even the targeting become a very smart part of your strategy? Um, what we did for Lexus, for example, was that we actually conducted a cluster analysis using behavioral and demographic data to try and find the different clusters of car buyers in Hong Kong. And we found that there was these typical other segments, such as the ambitious elitists and so on, that's frequently targeted by our main competitors in the market, which included um, Mercedes-Benz and Audi um, and BMW. But there was almost like an overlooked segment, which we call change hunters, that had very specific types of uh, attitudes that they were agreeing on. They were looking for another type of a luxury. They were looking for other types of brands, such as Tesla or Midi, not necessarily because of just mere functional aspects, but also to genuinely want to be able to break out of the status quo and to look for uh, change. And that almost echoes to other aspects of their life that they were very, very hungry for. And so, so this is the way that we have done it. Do, of course, you know, there are other many, many other ways to identify a new segment or new 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 ways to to think about where growth is going to come from. Cluster analysis is just one way of segmentation. But paint an interesting part of this whole story so that even when it comes to targeting, it's something that had some smarts and, and hopefully some some scores to go around that. Um, Fourth point is what I simply call um, unworthy enemy, unworthy hero. It's it's, it's uh, back to that point about you're telling a story and not just an, uh, an account of facts. So in a typical story, you're trying to set up a big enemy. If that enemy is not big enough, then your solution is not going to be big enough. So there are many ways to try and think of what is going to be more of a worthy enemy that makes your 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 entry be seen as something that is more meaningful, more more important for 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 the solution or for the brand to take on. 
Um, in in our case, for for Lexis, we 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 this was all about the struggle that small businesses face in literally a, a place where we uh, that commands the world's highest rents. Um, Hong Kong undoubtedly is kind of like um, a, a place that's so marked by ridiculously high property prices for 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 small businesses for merchants, and that's that's an, that's meant that they've been basically. Um, Need to, to be scared off, um, kind of like the most uh, uh, typical uh, or, or mainstream high streets, and they need to look for elsewhere uh, to be able to 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 enable their small businesses to to somewhat be able to survive. So that's a that's a community call a uh, uh, need. That's a that's a community tension. You know, what is it for you? Do you look for other types of cultural uh, tensions or cultural insights in order for you to find what's that bigger enemy that you want to take on? When it comes to the actual solution, um, um, on top of, of course, you know, articulating one um, uh, uh, essentially one big idea is always going to be very important. But I think uh, almost every camp campaign that is really constructed nowadays is going to be across multiple touch points, channels, and platforms. Now, very often I see a lot of cases too, is whereby some of these touch points are almost just given it as either just a laundry list or sim almost worse, like, you know, just a, 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 a kind of like a, a collection of, of activities that was done, but there was no real connection behind it. And 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 I am of the view that actually campaign touch points certainly need to be very well connected. And they should also be chosen because they, they are the ones that matter. Like it's not just doing every single tactic, every single uh, touch point because you could, um, is it the best choice of your marketing budget? Why? Like, what? Why was that so pivotal to your campaign journey? Why did that make a biggest impact on your in within your path to purchase? Um, why would that, if you were focusing your resources to to uh, put into that, be able to have that biggest uplift on your final results? For for in our case, you know, we connected an online to offline journey um, through multiple social digital tactics into. Um, signing up for a test drive. The test drive was a focus for our entire path to purchase because we had made, we were able to deduce through path previous conversion rates the the the, the uh, much stronger incremental ability that that would have on ultimate conversions than other parts of the journey, right? So it, what, what's going to be in your case, right? What's going to be in your path to purchase for your category? Also consider telling your campaign journey as a story in it in itself. What I mean by that is, whilst you know there's there's the there's the typical kind of like a marketing or campaign journey told through a flow chart, you can also almost help the uh, the judge kind of imagine it as if they were one of your target audiences or their pro your uh, your prospect themselves, right? So um, we we had written this in a way that almost. In the in the perspective of a prospect, you know, what would she be able to see? What would she feel? What would she receive from this brand? Right. So how she was first um, able to um, uh, 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 get in touch with this campaign through context contextualized uh, content, how then she that that uh, uh, led her to more personalized and targeted content and how that was uh, also followed on to her in terms of a retargeted uh, experience how that was a very natural experience for her to land onto the landing page to sign up. And then what was the other experiences that happened over the course of that test drive? Um, what happened after the test drive? How was she further continued to, to feel that she was being taken care of and engaged by this brand all to the point of being uh, of, 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 of dropping a deposit for the car? So when you're doing it in that first person uh, uh, perspective, it, it makes that it makes judging judges almost really be able to stand in the shoes of your audience and, and really therefore be able to understand what was that campaign experience supposed to be like in the first place. Uh, this is a big tip, almost one tip that I, I, I am always kind of hesitant to give every year. I feel a big trick to, to, to do in your results section, which you know is going to be one of the most important sections to, to, to craft, is something called a killer chart. So a killer chart is to me like the one chart that you may, you probably want to focus a bit more of your time and attention to, because it's that one chart that builds the biggest, most important story you want to build in, in uh, when it comes to your business effects, right? Um, consider the types of context you can put into for for this uh, uh, for this killer chart, right? 
you can be showing the chart in comparison to yourself and your competition. So here you see this is indexed uh, monthly unit sales of, of, of our car versus other com key competition cars in the same uh, um, uh, 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 premium SUV market, right? So you see us compared against them over time, what was the impact of that campaign? You can also add in other types of con context to also almost uh, beef up your story. So in, in this case, you know, this was showing the, 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 the sales in spite of an escalation of the uh, number of COVID-19 cases that happened during that time. So, you know, what's it going to be for you? Is it going to be a comparison be, uh, between yourself and uh, what you have in pre previous year? Is it going to be a uh, comparison against competition? Is it going to be a comparison against your other product lines of what you achieved? Is it a comparison of what you as a market has been achieving versus another market that launched a similar product? It, it doesn't, it's, you need to figure out what's best for your story, but I think that one memorable killer chart is actually something that is really going to be very, very helpful for you to kind of like ground your whole result story on something that is more, more memorable. And then this is the last one. Um, sometimes I also find even as a judge myself, I'm seeing like a, a, a list of results. OK, oh, we got um, how many impressions and we got uh, how many clicks and we got uh, uh, how many views of videos and so on. Comms uh, results are uh, alone on, are not enough, of course you know this, but you also need to link your comms results to the ultimate business impact. So the a very, very um, simple way to sometimes think about this is um, what were the comms results that you achieved through your campaign? What was the change in the behavior that you achieved? And what was that change of behavior able to do for your business? And how, what was there for the business impact that happened? In, in, in our case, it was, a, it was a matter of showing the, um, the digital efforts and digital content had that ability to, uh, to uh, uh, drive people to a call uh, test drive booking uh, uh, web page, um, which had, of course, uh, uh, an uplift on actual test drives and the turn up rates to the test drives as well as ultimate conversion efficiency post test drive um, as one single flow, right? So, so this is where you can really be able to demonstrate had it not been your communication results, that business uplift would not have happened, right? Even if you need to discount for other factors, right? Showing this fundamental journey, I think is, is super important. Otherwise, there's always a key going to be question of like, okay, we did this with this, we got a lot of views and then our sales went up. But is there really a clear correlation? If you're able to, if you're really, really able to piece this together in a much more persuasive story, I think that's going to really, really be able to help and matter. So, so those are the eight tips. Um, tell a story, not just an account of what happened, ground your case on a business problem. Don't forget the targeting. Uh, is actually also an interesting part of the story. Um, if there's an unworthy enemy, the heroes can be unworthy, right? So think what's the big hero. Uh, your campaign touch points need to be connected and need to matter. Consider telling the, the campaign as a journey, as a story in itself. Think about what's that killer results chart for yourself and link comms results to behavior change and business impact results together so that you, you're creating an ultimate effectiveness case at the end of the day. That's it from me. Um, I'd love to, if there are any questions here um, at this place, I'd love to take any, or uh, you know, if there's any that you can want to also reach out to me afterwards um, via my emails, that's all fine. Uh, any questions? This is awesome, Terence. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your, your secrets, okay? Thanks for being 